Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I am Christian Mo for AutoTalk.com. This week we are driving around in the 2016 Hyundai Tucson. The Hyundai Tucson is all new for 2016, and this new model is a dramatic improvement over the old crossover. I felt the previous Tucson was underpowered, unattractive, poorly built, and it wasn't that great to drive. The new car, however, uses Fluidic Sculpture 2.0 design that debuted on the Genesis, and it looks great. The sharp headlights, big grill, and the LED fog lamps help to brighten up the nose, while the 19-inch alloy wheels and silver accents add a dash of extra luxury. Around back, we have interesting tail lights that are very similar to the Genesis sedan, an aerodynamic rear spoiler, and dual squared-off exhaust tips that are finished in chrome. Overall, the 2016 Tucson is very handsome, and it certainly sets the visual benchmark for the compact CUV class. So here I am just driving around. Right now, I'm actually doing laps around my local shopping mall, because quite frankly, that's where a thing like this is likely going to live. This is a small, semi-affordable, you know, two-row, five-seat family sort of cross crossover. This is the car you buy when you're first getting kids and just starting a family and breaking out into life. And uh, Hyundai wants to hit that market hard. And one of the ways they're working on trying to hit that market as hard as possible is by giving you as much stuff in as small amount of space as humanly possible. So what that means is basically the new Tucson is a 80% version of the bigger Santa Fe. And I mean 80% in size and size alone. As you see, it sort of looks like the Santa Fe a lot. And then when you get on the inside, the inside definitely doesn't look as much like a Santa Fe, but there are definitely some cues and some design touches that carry across between both models. But just from an equipment standpoint, everything you would want from the bigger model is here. So I'm in the fancy limited trim edition. So I have seats that are heated and cooled. I have dual zone climate control. I have a big seven and a half, eight inch screen here in my dash with navigation and satellite radio. And that satellite radio has a hard drive attached to it. So it actually will like record a certain amount of time for your top six channels. So you can rewind and play back songs or if you're like a song that's on the radio and you don't want to miss it and a call comes in, you can pause it and it'll like save it. It's basically a DVR for your satellite radio. And then underneath the hood, I've got a nice peppy turbocharged engine, just like you can get in the Santa Fe, albeit a smaller one. And it's just sort of everything you want. I even have one of those humongously awesome, ginormous sunroofs that goes from the beginning of the car all the way to the back of the car, just like you can get on the bigger Santa Fe. Like I said, for all intents and purposes, they've just shrunk the Santa Fe by a little bit and they're selling it as a new car. And I think it's a brilliant idea because you can get a lot of that same equipment, but you cut the price a little bit. Now, powering this thing is a little 1.6 liter turbocharged engine, teeny tiny little motor, but it makes 175 horsepower and 195 pound feet of torque. And that's mated to Hyundai's little seven speed dual clutch transmission that they came out with. And I gotta say for being such a tiny peppy little high strung engine, it's actually kind of fun and I dig it. So it's just refined enough that you won't get annoyed with it, but it's just silly enough when you want it to be that it's kind of fun and playful. You could hit this little drive button down here to get into sport mode and you stand on the pedal and it'll drop gears and it'll wind out to 7,000 RPMs. Like you could rev the snot out of this little engine and when you're in sport mode, it holds gears forever. And it's just sort of fun and peppy and they've you know really focused on making sure that everyone who looks at this thing knows that this is supposed to be a fun interesting awesome car this isn't a mommy mobile this is for fun young couples and while it is all just a bunch of marketing garbage i do have to say that they've done their homework in trying to make this thing a good thing to drive so for starters like i said we have that peppy little engine made it to that dual clutch transmission, which is actually a pretty good trans transmission, and together as a combo is pretty solid. Even though this is a front wheel drive only, I don't have much tor torque steer, and the car is more neutral than you would expect it to. On the handling front, once again, Hyundai has done its homework, and they know that a stiffer car is a better car. 
So from the old Tucson to this one, they've made it 109% more rigid, they say. So that's more than twice as stiff as the old one. And you can actually kind of tell. I mean, this thing doesn't feel as stout as something like a Porsche Cayman, but it feels a lot stiffer than the old car. When you take sort of an off-camber turn, you don't feel like the whole thing is flopping around you. It feels a lot stiffer, and the suspension feels a lot better sorted. In fact, this is actually one of my favorite suspensions I've had in a Hyundai in several years now. Um, it is not as loose as most Hyundais tend to be, especially in the dampening. And if you saw at the wheel, the car stays much more controlled than I'm used to in a lot of Hyundais. It seems like they're finally sort of getting that situated and organized, and I really like it. So, suspension is good, chassis stiffness is good, engine is good, transmission is good, and my biggest weak point for all Hyundais so far is the steering. Also kind of good. Not great, but again, better than most of the other cars. Uh, there's still not a lot of feel, and I would like it to be heavier, but man, the steering is super quick, and it's super direct. It just makes the whole car feel darty and nimble. And being darty nimble is a good thing when you're trying to fit into that tiny parking mall space, but it's also just good on a back road in general. It does, like I said, it makes the car feel a lot lighter than it is and a lot more playful than it is, and it makes the car feel smaller than it is. And that's the fancy trick, because this car is not smaller than it is. In fact, compared to the old one, this one is longer, and it's wider, and it has a larger wheelbase. So it's bigger in basically every single dimension, but it drives like a smaller machine. So bravo to Hyundai for making that happen. It's a fancy party trick, and the car is a thousand times better for it. Um, as for, you know, general highway cruising and comfort, uh, it's surprisingly quiet in here, especially considering all the glass that I have. So um, road noise is about the largest thing you're going to have to worry about. Tire roar is a little louder than I would expect. But wind noise is extremely dimmed, so you've sort of got that whole, it all evens out to be just a nice, quiet ride. Um, if you're old and you're cranky, you might find the new suspension that I like so much on this thing to be a little bumpy on the interstate. Um, it doesn't quite smooth out bumps so much as it just sort of hops over them slowly in a fashion that you can't really feel them. So that's something that people might complain about. But it doesn't feel busy, it doesn't feel harsh, and it's certainly not punishing. So I think that they finally struck a nice middle ground with keeping a suspension that is sporty enough and useful enough for a youth like me, but also comfortable enough for everyday driving and moms in their 30s and etc. So, so far so good on the Hyundai. And then we go to some other pet peeves of mine. Um, if you watch any of our videos, you know I hate an interior that doesn't have storage space. Drives me mad when I'm in the front seat and I can't put anything anywhere. Hyundai, once again, has gotten it right. So I've got big cubby down here, huge open thing with two 12 volt ports, a USB port, and an auxiliary jack. So it's a big enough slot you can put even those new gigantic half tablet phones down there and still plug it up. I like that you've got three power sources right there out in the open. I've got a small little cubby in front of that. I've got two cup holders. I've got a little change cubby here. I have a big deep cubby here that's big enough to hold my camera with my big lens attached to it with room to spare. I've got nice sized door pockets that both have a bottle hole. And then in this passenger side, you even get a little pocket up on the uh, center fire, the firewall there. Just a tiny little pocket, but it's something. And then I have a sunglass holder up top. So lots of nice little storage spaces. I dig that a lot. There are little pockets behind the seats. There are door pockets that are decent sized for the back seats. And then the center armrest folds down for two cup holders. So even if you put two adults and two kids in this thing, you will have room to stash the extra water bottles, the extra candy, whatever toy that was thrown up here from the back, all that sort of stuff. You can just get it put away so it's out of the way. Super, super smart. If you're gonna sell anything that you ever wanna put kids in or take on a road trip, you need to have places to put things. Glove box, a little smaller than I would like, but that's about the only sort of complaint I have about the storage space up in the front of this. So bravo to Hyundai for getting that right. 
Now again, back to equipment. This thing is super, super well equipped. And it's, like I said, it's just as well equipped as any of the bigger models, really. I've got leather seats that are real leather. I've got real leather on the steering wheel. Like I said, I have this seven acre slab of glass in the roof. I've got navigation and the screen that they're using up here looks beautiful, nice, ultra high res, way sharper and higher quality than the one that was in the Pathfinder I had a few weeks, weeks ago. So big points to them for that. You know, map is on an SD card here, so it's super easy to update your maps if you want to for your navigation. Instead, I've got heated and cooled seats. I'm at a low level, like this is a compact SUV. You know, this is like the smallest crossover that they make. And I've got heated and cooled seats. Like, yes, cooled seats are the best. Especially when you're doing these videos and you can't have the AC cranked up too high because it comes through the microphone. So, like, everything you would want is here. Now, there is sort of a bad point to that whole getting all of the equipment that you would want in a bigger car in a smaller car and that's that the price is smaller than the bigger car but not by a lot so if you take a santa fe sport and you deck it out with all of these options you're looking at like 34 35 thousand dollars this tucson that i'm in here is thirty one thousand one hundred and ten dollars so thirty one thousand dollars is still right around that average new car price which is good because you have the average new car price with all of the fancy equipment built in. But $31,000 is still kind of a lot for a teeny tiny CUV. So you sort of have to take the good with the bad. I personally have absolutely nothing wrong with spending good money for good equipment in a slightly smaller car. I think it's a wonderful idea and I wish they would have done it sooner because I hate having to buy the most gigantic thing in the world just to get the equipment you want. Now, that said, I will understand if people are like, $31,000 is nuts. Well, if you cut out the leather seats, if you cut out you know, the cooled seats, stuff like that, if you get rid of the beautiful, amazing, gigantic sunroof, that price will fall down very quickly, and you can easily get one of these that's fairly well equipped for $26,000, $27,000. Now, this one is a two-wheel drive model, not a four-wheel drive. They do sell for the four-wheel drive. This one is not it. Um, despite that, I haven't had much issues with it. In fact, I was driving up and down my driveway, about a thousand feet long and it's gravel, um, like an absolute hooligan a couple of times, just playing with the car, uh, turning off traction control and seeing how slippery it would get. And uh, I didn't know I didn't have the all-wheel drive version when I was doing that. So, hey, there you go. Um, it's front wheel drive, but it works really well. Like I said, there's not a lot of torque, torque steer. Um, it doesn't seem to be as nose heavy as I would expect when you're driving it around some corners. So it, even if you don't get all wheel drive, it is still a good machine and it'll probably have better traction in more scenarios than you expect. Um, otherwise though, like I said, it's a solid little machine. Fuel, fuel economy, um, is rated at 25 city, 30 highway with a 27 combined. Um, this is probably the biggest weak link in this chain um i'm getting on average about 24 um and that's with my combination of back road highway with very small amounts of city thrown in so fuel economy 24 is not bad um especially for a peppy little turbo engine in a car this size but when sticker says 30 and you're getting 24. Or even when sticker says 27 and you're getting 24. That's a little disappointing. Um, it all comes down to that engine, though. You know, it's a peppy little turbocharged engine. And if you keep it out of boost, I'm sure you could really get that fuel economy up there. But most of your torque comes on at just 1,500 RPMs. So boost comes on early and it gives you a nice little wave of torque. And you just sort of... Put your foot in a little bit and the car will waft away at speed and you don't quite realize just how much fuel you're using um, and i think that's the biggest problem with it is it's a teeny tiny engine and you have to be on boost all the time to make it move anywhere so yeah if you drive like a grandma always on the highway and you're really careful with it in eco mode let's put it back in eco mode there you could probably get 30 miles to the gallon if you're lucky uh, but most users expect to stick around that 25 mark that's the city rating. Um, if you're just doing city driving, expect it to be a little bit less. 
So, not bad considering there's only one real harsh mark on the car as a whole. Like I said, I think it looks handsome. I like the big 19 inch wheels. They're t freaking 245 series wide. These are bigger than what come on a uh, GTI. You know, so it's got nice sporty rubber. Suspensions are great. The new chassis is great. Like I said, I love the way it looks. The interior is fantastic. The leather seats feel great. They're nice and comfy. The rear seats recline. The rear hatch is huge. You can fold the seats down. Put a whole pile of stuff back there. You can bring home like three 60 inch televisions if you stack them on top of, the top of each other. Tons of room. So I've got this big, beautiful sunroof. It just looks amazing. Let's in all this sunshine. So it, it, it's just a fun little car. You know, I would like it to be a little bit cheaper. I would like it to be a little more fuel efficient, but really that's it. Like, there's not a lot to improve on this. The old Tucson was a bit of a dog. Um, I never really liked it. It was just a mediocre car for a mediocre market. Uh, the Santa Fe, I've always loved. I thought it was a great crossover, one of the best you can buy on the market. And then Hyundai has just shrunk it to take one of the best crossovers on the market and make one of the best compact crossovers on the market. So there you go. If you're in the market for something like this and you want something small, um, I dig this a lot. Um, there are a couple in this segment that I've not driven yet. So I've not been in the new CRV stuff like that. But um, I've been in the XV Crosstrek. I've been in the Chevy Terrain. Uh, now I've been in this. Like, I think this might be my favorite so far. So take that for what it's worth. Anyways, once again, thank you guys for hanging around with me. I am Christian Mo. We are driving around in the 2016 Hyundai Tucson, all new for 2016. Um, if you guys like this video, please go ahead and leave us a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, please give us a thumbs down and then go ahead and comment what you liked or did not like. We want these reviews to get better and the only way we can do that is with your help. If you like these videos and you want to see more content like this, go ahead and hit that little subscribe button and it'll make us all happy and joyous on the inside. Like I said, I'm Christian Moe. This has been a driving review for autotalk.com and I will see you guys next week. Cheers.